So no big secret here on the channel, Apple TV is one of my preferred entertainment, home theater, and even a gaming device in our household as well. We use it for Apple Music and all that. I'll happily buy every new Apple TV that Apple decides to put out. It's a device that I would love to see revved every single year with more RAM, better processors, and all of that. We haven't gotten really anything this year out of Apple with or for Apple TV. There was, they didn't even talk about uh, tvOS at WWDC. We had the September event come and go. So now rumors are starting to fly a little bit about the October event or a possible October event for the last products of the year, and maybe there'll be an Apple TV in there. So I wanna go through the list of things that is being rumored by the Apple insider journalist folks. In this case, specifically Mark Gurman at Bloomberg, talk about what he mentions and, and give, some, give, give some of my own thoughts on what I would really love to see out of a new Apple TV 4K. Before I go through this list, just to say, the other thing that kind of kills me with this is the way that so much technology changes so fast. The last Apple TV version that we had was announced in April 2021. So we're 18 months removed from the last device. And some folks talk like that's too soon. I don't think so. That That's about the limit actually of what I would like to see. Again, I'd be happy for a new a new model every year, adding features and capabilities. So I don't think it's been too long at all for a new model. But there's four things in the rumors. One is a faster CPU, kind of expected in, in any new revision of hardware. So right now, the current model Apple TV 4K runs a variant of the A12 chip, getting fairly longer in the tooth now amongst all of the different Apple Silicon. The rumor is the new Apple TV 4K might have an A14. That's great. I, I'm happy with as close to the current model of processor that Apple is willing to put into the Apple TV 4K, particularly as they start to position the device to do more stuff and do more gaming. Feature number two is a, is a bump in RAM size. The current Apple TV features three gigabytes of memory. The rumor is the new model would have four, 33% increase, that's not bad. Current model iPhones and iPads I think have more memory than that, but they also multitask and do a lot more. Third option though, this one kind of surprises me. They're talking about a new version of the Siri remote. So with the current version of the Apple TV 4K, we got this upgraded remote. I think this one is pretty fantastic. It's a significant upgrade over the one that we had before that. True story, I actually tried to switch my parents and now my late grandfather over to using Apple TVs, cutting the cord and all that, with the prior models with the black touchpad, and they just couldn't do it. They couldn't manage to use that remote accurately. But I think this thing is a massive, massive improvement. Being able to call for Siri on it, removing the touchpad for this the circle piece, but still being able to swipe. So I, I think this is great. I don't know what else they would add. Maybe they might add an Apple TV Plus or an iTunes hard button. I hope they don't start to add hard buttons like the Roku's and some of the other remotes have. I think it's much cleaner and just simpler like this. But the rumor is there's a code level reference to something new, something new related to the remote. And one of the extensions of that rumor talks about maybe the remote having a U1 chip in it specifically for like find my support. You lose your remote in the house, maybe you'd be able to navigate to it. It's probably just stuck in your couch cushions anyway. That seems pretty pointless to me. If I were Apple, I would be sticking with this happily and investing in other areas of the platform. And the fourth part of the rumor is a lower price. So the MSRP of course on the current Apple TV 4Ks is $179 for the 32 gigabyte. Uh, the 64 gigabyte variant is 199. Quite honestly, for a superior entertainment device that's the main hub of like so much of, of doing so many things i don't think that price bothers me yeah fire sticks are cheaper and in my opinion they're way cheaper devices roku's are cheaper and in my opinion there's a lot of things that make roku an inferior or a cheaper device as well there's going to be an apple tax there's going to be an apple premium uh, i don't know up to 200 dollars for the cornerstone of my home video entertainment it, it's it's a rounding error compared to the cost of the rest of the gear, the TVs that some of us are connecting these devices to, the home theaters that we're running them in. Th this one, I, I don't know what to make of this. What are they really gonna do with a lower priced Apple TV? They're gonna cut the box down, right? I don't want them to cut the box down. I want them to supercharge the box. I want more features, I want more power. I, I don't want a $50 Apple TV. And what would you even get in a $50, a $50 Apple TV? Are they still going to increase the CPU power? Are they going to increase the RAM? Are they going to add more features at the same time that they might like significantly slash the MSRP of the box? When everything else is getting more expensive and inflation is driving the price up, 
to manufacture, build, and deliver everything. That one to me just doesn't make a lot of sense. I suppose if you want to make the cheap variant or if Apple's going to make the cheap variant, fine. Make the $50 entry point model, cut it down and all of that. But I want the super powered box. I want the Apple TV Pro. I want the Apple TV Ultra, the Apple TV Max, whatever you want to call it. Give it to me for 200 bucks. Keep the price there, 250 even. But it's got to deliver the features and performance and capabilities to warrant that price. It's got to have a, a much more powerful CPU. You've got to push on the memory. The thing that I really actually want to see and, the, and what scares me about managing the price too much or cutting the price down is the storage size. 32 and even 64 gigabytes if you use an Apple TV for gaming is not large enough. And so I, I want to see 128 gig, 256, maybe even like a, a 512. With the Apple subscription services and Apple Arcade, you have access to so many games. You want to be able to download a whole bunch of those and have them resident, have them playable there. You want to have a bunch of apps and stuff running on your system. Software is taking up more space. I'm running Infuse and Infuse needs to have its locally cached copy of all of the metadata for the stuff that's in your library. And I, I often have Infuse deload all of my metadata. So I go to use the Infuse app, I open it up, and it tells me like due to lack of space or, or space limitations available on your device, the, the metadata had needed to be dumped and, and now it needs to be essentially re refetched from iCloud. And so you're sitting there waiting, like I just wanted to go in and start playing back a piece of content. So I'm all for powering up this platform making it better, adding features, adding hardware power, adding storage space. Apple, do it. Go go after gaming in a real concerted way. Get some bigger, more involved, complex, and, and deeper games on Apple Arcade and downloadable to play here. And give us the space to store a whole bunch of them. You know, give us that higher bit rate video and audio. That's the thing I want to see in Apple TV more than anything. You brought lossless audio and high fidelity audio to Apple Music. It's time to bring it to iTunes movies and iTunes TV shows. Pump those video bit rates way up there. Get the lossless, lossless Dolby audio and Atmos audio flowing and enable apps to output that stuff as well. That's the stuff that I want to see. Will it happen? You know, we'll see. We're already, at the time of recording this, we're already essentially done with the first third of October. There was also some rumors that maybe October wouldn't actually be like a press conference, uh, a broadcast type of event, but they would release information. They would release new product details just more directly, essentially over the internet or maybe in, in concert or combination with special influencers and special journalists. So we wait with bated breath. We will see what happens here in October with Apple. And if it doesn't happen now, it's probably not happening in 2022. And so once again, our hopes would go towards probably March, late winter, early spring as the next opportunity, which would make it a two full years since the Apple TV 4K was actually last refreshed. So what are you hoping for? Do you use an Apple TV 4K? Why or why not? What kind of features and capabilities are you jonesing to have in the platform and in the device? Sound off in the comments. Please do all the regular YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, leave those comments, even if it's just a thanks or a thumbs up. It means a lot. If you'd like to support the channel more directly, check down in the description below. There's Amazon affiliate links. There's YouTube memberships. I'm always grateful for a super thanks. Thanks for watching. Coming back for more home theater discussion and fun.